Welcome to Voice of Healing. I am Brother Jerry Malanda, the Shepherd of the House of Prayer for All Nations Europe. Today I will be teaching on the topic of moving your mountain. Throughout the time together that we are going to spend, I want you to expect Jesus to do a miracle in your life today. Our scripture reading is taken from Mark chapter 11, from verse 20 to verse 24. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree uh, dried up from the root. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to, to them, have faith in God. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Point number one, life and death are in the power of your own tongue. In the book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, the Bible tells us death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat the fruit of it. Learn to speak in line with the written word of God. Over every situation that pertains to your life, learn to speak in line with the written word of God. If you speak in line with the written word of God, you are speaking a blessing into your life. If you speak concerning your situation, contrary to the written word of God, you are speaking death or curses into your situation. James tells us in James chapter 3, verse 6, the tongue also is a fire. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Over in the book of Mark chapter 11, Jesus spoke against the purpose of the fig tree. That no man should eat any fruit from it henceforth and the fig tree dried up from the root. Negative words that are spoken against the purpose of something or the purpose of someone are actually curses. And positive words that are spoken concerning the purpose of something or the purpose of someone are actually blessings. Peter had that understanding. And he said, Jesus, the fig tree which you cursed has dried up from the root. Jesus did not say, uh, literally, I curse you, fig tree. But he spoke against the purpose for which God created that fig tree. Fig trees are, uh, are supposed to produce figs. So when Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you, henceforth it was a curse. And Peter understood it. Therefore, learn to speak. Learn to meditate on what is positive. Paul also had that understanding and he tells us in the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Finally, brethren, brothers and sisters, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. Meditate on these things. Take an inventory of these things. Point number two. Have faith in God. He cannot lie. Moses taught us in Numbers chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 19, that God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man or a human that he should repent or change his mind. Has he said and will he not do or has he spoken and will he not make it good? The Lord says to each one of us in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12, You have seen well, 
for I watch over my word to perform it. God watches over his written word to perform it. This sickness is not going to consume you. The Lord told Malachi uh, in Malachi chapter 3 verse uh, 6, For I am the Lord, I do not change. God does not change. Therefore, you are not consumed, O sons of Jacob. I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You need to believe in the integrity of God and in the integrity of the word of God. Moses taught us in Psalm 119 verse 89, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And Jesus told us in Matthew chapter 24 verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will by no means pass away. The question becomes, <laughs> have you settled the word of God in your own heart? Or are you still debating in your head, thinking that these are all the Jewish fables, or this is just a philosophy, a psychology, or mind over matter? God tells each one of us over in Psalm 89, verse 34 to 35, my covenant I will not break nor alter the things that is gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn in my holiness, I will not lie to David. David here means a beloved. So you are the beloved of the Lord and God is not going to lie to you. Point three, your words have creative power. The reason why the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie is not merely because of the integrity or the morality of God or because lying will infringe on God's character. The main reason why God does not lie because his words are creative. In Genesis chapter 1, when God saw darkness, he said, let there be light. Whenever God says, let there be, there is no doubt in the mind of God as far as his intents are. God wanted to create, and whatever he spoke came to pass. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3, the Bible tells us, by faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen or materialized were not made of the things which are visible. Once and for all, we need to understand that we are created in the image of God and after his likeness. That's what Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 told us. Our words, just like the word of our Heavenly Father, have creative powers. What we speak, what we think, will be materialized in our life and will become part of our life. John tells us in, first, in John chapter 1, verse 14, the word became flesh, or the word was materialized and dwelt among us, or became part of our life. We must understand that God created everything using uh, the word that came out of his mouth. Nothing was created that was uh, uh, created without the word of God, according to John chapter 1, verse 1 to verse 3. Of course, Christ Jesus is uh, the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was uh, God. God and his word, they are one. You can't dissociate Jesus, God, and the written word of God. The word of God has a creative power. And when you speak it over your situation, it releases the creative power of God in your situation. And if you speak contrary to the written word of God, actually you are unleashing the plan of the enemy in your own life. And that's what is going to be materialized in your situation. 
for the world lies under the influence of the devil. That's what John told us. So when we are speaking contrary to the word of God, actually it is the words of the devil, according to 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. I used to have a problem with my eyesight when I was uh, 13 years old and uh, I was having headaches so when they brought me to the hospital they saw that I needed some eyeglasses. So my mom bought me a wonderful uh, gold frame so that uh, it would be cool and I hated those uh, eyeglasses. They were so big, all the children, they teased me and uh, I wore them for two years. And then one day I was meditating on the word of God. I read the book of Malachi. In Malachi chapter 1 from verse 8 to verse 13, God says, when you offer the blind uh, as a sacrifice, it is not evil. And when you bring the stolen, the lame, and the sick, thus you bring an offering. Should I accept it from your hand? When I read it, I said to God, God, you did not like it when uh, the children of Israel brought to you animal sacrifices that had a defect uh, in them. So I am the sheep of your pasture, according to John chapter 10. I belong to you, and my body is the living sacrifice now. My grandfather in the village used to have 200 goats. And when I went to visit him in the village, I never saw any of the goats of my grandfather wearing eyeglasses. And I said to God, God, here I am, the sheep of your pasture. Why should I be wearing glasses? And I prayed based on that Malachi. And the Lord healed my eyes when I was 15 years old. I did the eye test back home, and my vision was 2020. When I was in France studying, at, uh, when I did the test to have also my driving license, my eyesight was 2020. Last year, when I did again the eyesight test in Glasgow, it was still 2020. Medical doctors need to verify that you have been healed. Don't throw away your eyeglasses. That is a foolishness. They need to verify that you are saying perfectly in the name of Jesus. Point four. The Spirit of the Lord will remove your mountain. In Luke chapter 1, from verse 34 to verse 35, Mary said to the angel Gabriel, How can this be? Since I do not know a man, the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. The truth is, you do not need my physical hands. John tells us in John chapter 6, verse 63, that it is the Spirit that gives life, the flesh. My physical hands, they profit nothing. The words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. If you learn to speak in line with the written word of God of King Jesus, there will be tremendous power released through your words and no devil in hell will be able to question the authority behind those words that you are pronouncing. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4, Solomon the preacher tells us, Where the word of the king is, there is a power, tremendous power. And who may say to the king, what are you doing? No one can question the authority of King Jesus. Over in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, the prophet tells us, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel is dead. Yesterday it was for Zerubbabel. Today this is the word of the Lord for you and for myself. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Peter tells us that we need to speak as oracles of God, meaning we need to speak in line with the written word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 11, Peter says, If anyone speaks, if any believer speaks, how is he supposed to speak? Let him speak as the oracles of God as one who speaks the very words of God. It is time to teach the body of Christ 
to speak and to think in line with the written word of God and not outside of this book. Paul taught us the same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, that we should learn to speak not beyond what is written in this book. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul tells us, now to him, to God, who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask, or above all we think, according to the power of the Holy Ghost that is at work in us. So not just God hears our prayers, what we utter from our mouth, but also what we are thinking, according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Let me share a testimony with you. There was a brother, Brother John Baptiste, John the Baptist in English, uh, lives in France. He's uh, 40 years old, and he was diagnosed with an enlarged uh, prostate. His prostate was the size of someone who is 70 years old. And the doctors in France suspected that uh, there might be some cancer involved into that. So they scheduled uh, surgery. So my brother, Nel Malanda, explained the word of God to him, the power of our words, the power of confessing the word of God and speaking to our mountain. And after explaining to him, we had a group call in France and I was here and we prayed. We agreed in prayer, if the two of us shall agree concerning anything, it will be done by my Father in heaven. We prayed, we commanded that the prostate to come back to its normal size in the name of Jesus. We commanded uh, any trace of cancer to completely disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. So Brother John Baptiste went back to see the uh, oncologist and uh, said, I believe I'm healed. I want you to do another uh, MRI. So the doctor reluctantly agreed to do another test. So they run one in La, La Défense. They found nothing, so the doctor was kind of puzzled and sent him back to four other hospitals in Paris. He went and did the test and nothing was found. His prostate went back to the normal size and the doctor discharged him. Like I said before, the medical doctors, they must verify your divine healing in the mighty name of Jesus. God is not against medical knowledge. And God also uses the knowledge of medical doctors. So go and check also with your medical doctors to confirm the divine healing. As I was praying, preparing for this episode, the Lord spoke to me. And the Lord said to me that you've been fasting and you've been praying about the cancerous tumors that are in your stomach. You've been praying that the Lord will isolate them because they've been spreading and uh, you want them to stop spreading. And that's what you've been praying and fasting for. So in the name of Jesus, I agree with your prayer and fasting. I curse those uh, cancerous tumors in you in the name of Jesus. I command them to be isolated, to stop spreading, and I command them to dematerialize and vanish now in your system in Jesus mighty name and I thank Jesus because he has done it so let us pray also for as many as are under the sound of my voice we have a problem you want your mountain also to be moved you've been struggling with that same issues and I pray today that you will put your hand where your problem is. If you have a sickness, if you have a disease, you don't need my physical hand, as I've already explained, that uh, the flesh profits nothing. It is uh, the spirit that gives life, that quickens. And the words that I'm speaking, they are spirit. The Lord is sending forth his uh, healing power through the words that I'm speaking in the mighty name of Jesus. So, let us pray. You put your hand where your sickness is, where your disease is, and let me pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the viewers. I want to give you all the glory and I want to give you all the praise for all that you are doing. Indeed, before we call, you've already answered. And while we are still speaking, you said, here I am. So, Father, I thank you because your ears are inclined on the prayer of the righteous. And our prayer is a delight unto you. We are not bothering you with our problems. You say, come to me, all of you, labor and are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest. So, Father, I present your sons and I present your daughters that are 
going through that sickness and that disease, that terminal illness. In the mighty name of Jesus, I command that sickness to leave from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes. I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness in the mighty name of Jesus. As I was praying again this morning, the Lord revealed to me that you have fibroids. Your fibroids are so big. Let me share a small testimony with you. We were praying for a wonderful sister that uh, was in Glasgow and she had fibroids. The doctor said those fibroids were in her like the size of a baby that is a six month pregnant. So that's the kind of thing she was carrying. Her belly was always protruded because uh, she looked like a six month pregnant woman. But as we prayed, the Lord caused that those fibroids to completely disappear in the name of Jesus. So I command also your fibroids in the name of Jesus. You've been bleeding heavily. So I command those fibroids to disappear right now in the name of Jesus, to dematerialize, that you are going to be able also to conceive again and have your own children. Where those fibroids sat and was preventing you from carrying a child, I command them to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you. I want to give you all the glory. The Lord is saying to me that uh, your right ear, you have deafness in that uh, uh, right ear and all that you you hear is just uh, white noise. You can't hear anything in that uh, uh, right ear. So right now in the mighty name of Jesus, I command that ear to be opened right now. The spirit of deafness that is in that right ear, I command it to to leave at once in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you. I want to give you all the glory. I want to give you all the praise. And right now in the name of Jesus, I see that you have a problem with your knee, your left knee, and they want to do an operation on that knee. Right now in the name of, they want to do a knee replacement. That's what the Lord is saying to me. Right now in the name of Jesus, I command the new cartilage to be put between those two bones because the bones are basically on each other. That's why they want to put, to do that operation. So I command the new cartilage to be recreated on your left knee right now in the name of Jesus. And from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I want to thank you also. The Lord is showing me that you have a problem with your left arm. You, it, you can't move it to the, the full length as if uh, the muscle here between uh, um, the muscle at this junction is kind of frozen and you can't fully stretch your arm. And right now in the name of Jesus, I command the power of the Holy Ghost to come upon that left arm and you'll be able to stretch it forward in the mighty name of Jesus. I command life into that arm. Father, I want to thank you and I want to give you all the glory and I want to give you all the praise. And I pray also against the sugar diabetes. You've been having that sugar diabetes for a long time. You've been on medication for 10 years with that sugar diabetes. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command that sugar diabetes to leave your body in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, the Lord is saying the problem is your tongue. You have a sweet tongue. And the doctor advised you to stop eating all those sugary things. So you need to change your diet. You need to change. Because the, the, the diabetes is not caused by an evil attack. It is by what you are eating in your case. So change what you are eating. Stop eating always those sweet things. So right now in the name of Jesus, from the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, I command that diabetes to leave in the name of Jesus. And I command perfect wholeness and perfect soundness in the mighty name of Jesus. You've been having an upset stomach. It is like an, a, an ulcer in your stomach. Right now in the name of Jesus, I command that ulcer in your stomach to leave at once and not to come back in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the tips of your toes, I command perfect wholeness and I command perfect soundness in Jesus' mighty name. So, if you've not made Jesus the Lord of your life, please invite him, do so. Just pray this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, acknowledge I'm a sinner. Today, I want to come home. Forgive me of my iniquities. Wash me in your blood and make me as white as snow. Today, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. Enter into my heart and adopt me into this family. In Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. If you have made that prayer, welcome into the family of believers. And I want you to find a Bible-believing church and uh, start to study and become a disciple of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining me on Voice of Healing. I hope that you've been edified and touched by the Holy Spirit during this time. Join me next week as I will be giving another in-depth teaching on the topic of moving your mountain and draw more from the Holy Spirit in a powerful time of prayer. Make sure you tune in. Expectant of a miracle. I will see you soon. God loves you and I love you. God bless you.